Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a special edition of Star Trek Online's The Show Version. Synopsis Sundays with our guest tonight, Valken FX. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Of Star Trek. Very glad to be here, buddy. I'm joined by a usual panel of the show, Trek Wednesdays, starting off with the man who has been known yet not known, our chief emergency role-playing hologram who fills us all with awe of inspiration and immersion, Zeph from Zeph Films. Good evening on this wonderful Sunday evening. <laughs> we have our chief instructor who just loves to give us structure for instructions, Teacher Kirby. As soon as she figures out how to unmute her mic. Sorry, I had to, I had the uh, live stream running in my ears at the same time. I had to shut that down. Welcome. Hi, how's it going, everyone? Our chief of cheesy tactics that hates torps and loves to give me all sorts of harassment, Captain SOB. Hello. Our chief and our chief logistics officer, the man who has more fur than the harassment. Yeti and Captain Bigfoot SOB. combined and still... Hello. Somehow managed to remain cool on a chief hot sunny day. Officer, Timber Wolf, kick this thing off with a good house. Sir. And Bigfoot combined. Oh, 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 Timber Wolf, you wound your foot or something? Man? Good house, sir. It's been a long day, oh. and there are reasons why I should not be happy. Plus, there's extra paperwork involved, so, so, yeah. It's been a long day, uh, you know, the and there to are know, reasons we'll the why I... For everybody, for that matter. We're just going to jump straight into this here with the build's function first, and then we're going to have a brief message by Valken FX and see what's coming down the pipe for him and his stream core. Straight off the bat, we have our first build here tonight. We're going to go to the KDF... In Jerezareth. What do you guys think of this thing so far here from what you've looked at? I would make a few changements. Uh, it's overall pretty well laid out. The console layout is pretty damn good. The bridge also layout is pretty good. There's a few changes I would do personally, but it's personal play style. And there's one lack of something I'm hold deeply to any build, no matter what it is, but it's the three-piece Iconian. Um, but if you're working without reputation, the Kabali set's really good, apart from the shields. I would probably swap to a soul shields, if it, if anything. For shield polarity, I feel it's kind of almost a must, especially with a fabrication engineer. He's going, obviously going for a pure threat tank, and he's going to be taking a lot of damage, so not having... Reverse shield player. I would actually scrap the engineering team. Have the emergency power to weapons one and three and reverse shield player. He's already got enough healing there with the uh, orcs destruction toad and the hazemitters. He's got plenty of hull resistance. He's even got a feedback pulse in there. He's running part gen, so the feedback pulse works pretty well. I'm personally not a fan. This is a personal opinion, but I don't like running Omega of Delta. I know it keeps the attack pattern upkeep, but I can't bring myself to run a beam firewall one. But that's personal opinion. Spence. <laughs> Oof. I you know, I would just one thing I would do here is I, I'd agree with that reverse shield polarity. Um weapon wise, the meta is shifting into using a plus beam setup. So I would look into getting the Terran Task Force Disruptor and the Advanced Radiant Anti-Proton Beam Ray from the Terran and Iconian reputations and uh, putting those in your first two four slots and then grabbing some nice plus beam locator consoles. Um, Boff-wise, um, the polarized hull I would personally replace with a science team. Um... The FAW-1 is a good safety net, but if you could put a chemo there, even the chemo isn't as good as it used to be, so if you don't have it, it's really not worth spending the money on. What's the Ensign level command ability that gives the shield healing? Overwhelm something? Overwhelm emitters. 
Overwhelm emitters, I'd move the tack team to where the fall one is and put an overwhelm emitters one where the tack team currently is. That's what I'd personally do. That's a good idea. I'd also recommend coffee. It will help. Lots and lots of coffee. Agreed. Oh, and I would go with the full Iconian four piece myself. It kind of looks like this is um, in transition because we have, obviously, there's a lot of work put into it with the investment with the Crit D3 pen arrays. So we're probably saying at this point, move two of those arrays to the rear, get at least, or at least one of them to the rear, and get at least the Withering Disruptor array from the Terran set. And then shift to the four-piece Iconian. Is that tanky enough or versus the set bonuses for the Kabali? The Iconian set is, for especially for tanking, is just too good. I mean, you, you have to have enough damage to keep the threat. You have a good all-damage buff of 30% to your entire team with the four-piece. I personally run the four-piece as well on my tanks. The shields, to me, I think are overpowered, especially for tanks. They're resilient shields. They remove debuffs. Cons consistently. Uh, the engines are pretty fast engines if you go past most the other shields, set bonus yeah. engines. So it keeps your defense up. Hell, even the warp core is pretty decent in the sense of giving you weapon power. Um, to be honest, nowadays we just use it for amp. Uh, the warp core doesn't matter. If he doesn't want to run the four piece, you can, you have very many variations. You could keep the Kabali deflector for the maximum healing and just run the three piece Iconian. Uh, that gives you all the major hull healing, shield healing you could ever need. Um, or you could swap it around and run the Terran warp core and run three-piece Iconian full deflector engines and shields. Uh, if you wanted to go more offensive, you could run a three-piece Iconian even with ROM engines, but I would recommend it. Running well, ROM engines with Delta doesn't work too well. It affects the Omega, but not too much. So he's better off with a four-piece Iconian or a three-piece and a Kabali deflector. Personal choice. I was. I also just saw the uh, uh, what console is that? The Constriction Anchor. I would replace that with the Polymorphic Probe Array, which it, that's a plus twenty-five percent Cat One damage bonus for your anti-proton weapons, and it's got a nice clicky that can do decent in some runs. That's all available on the exchange for around five to six million, I believe. Has anybody had a moment to look at the skills? Yeah, I've had a look at skills. I, I have. I've done a lot of skills in time, and especially for threat tanks. But in general, you want to run a, a lot of things. I think the nine points in threat control is a bit overkill. Those last red points don't really bring much to you in terms of even resistance as well as threat. He's better off putting those back into the power systems. He's got three points in auxiliary and weapon performance, which pretty much as a base gives him low auxiliary and weapon performance, and that's pretty much what your entire ship runs off. So he's better off putting the auxiliary performance and weapon performance back up to six using those three points. Um, I've also seen that he's... Uh, where was it? The, f the full nine points of particle gens, it will affect his feedback pulse, but those three points will probably finish off the rest of his base uh, power level points. And the nine points in particle gens, as well as it's nice for the damage on the threat tank, unless you're running a pure side boat like an Anorax, it's not going to really make much of a difference to your ship. Considering he also has to run the insulators because he is an engineer. Apart from that, it's pretty well-rounded. I'm actually looking at this and thinking maybe he could probably stick a little bit more, depending on how his offense and defense is, to him. I'm thinking he could probably stick a little bit more into hull plating yeah. and or shield performance. But what do you guys think? I would say you can say those points there. They're not going to give you that much, especially with everything else you're going to be stacking. And 
if you can get in the fleet with a T3 combat buff, that right there is plus 40% or plus 40 to uh, all resistances, which is uh, going to add quite a bit and more than compensate for the, the missing points out of those two. Let some shift points into power subsystems. Now, how frequently is that buff obtainable by a fleet, and how, what's the duration? Uh, if the fleet's running it, it lasts constantly for five days, and then as soon as it's done, they can start it right back up. Even without the fleet buff, having six points in threat control orcs the defense. You're going to have plenty of resistances. I personally run six points threat control, three points hull plating, three points armor reinforcements, just to round it out. But this is still not necessary. And as for the shield performance and engine performance, I personally don't even run any points in those anymore. We get so many power levels from so many different places, Plasma and Gleech, Supremacy... Uh, the Terran Warp Core, if you run it, there's you get power from everywhere that you don't necessarily need those base power points. The Warp Core efficiency and the potential and all those stacking power levels really gives you all, all you need. The base level amount only affects you when you first go into combat, and it builds up pretty quickly, so it's not now, needed. Also, with the, his space rep traits... Um, I would personally run active hole hardening over the Nukara defense trait. The Nukara defense trait stacks so well with things, though. It's, I mean, he doesn't have override subsystem safeties, which would really affect it. But That's, I, If I recall from the Agronauts, uh, most of them just swear by that being the best defensive trait. I guess it comes down to personal opinion. I, I've been rocking that thing for so long that I, I never leave it alone now. <laughs> so either works. Now I just took a look at his notes tab here and um, I would remove the damage control engineer. You're running the two copies of Mercy Powered Weapons so that DOF is doing nothing for you. I would... Replace that with, let's see. He could use a battery, Doff. I notice he's running um, weapons battery, shields battery, and what the I've, energy amplifier. So I would do, do like a, the. Um, good. A maintenance engineer for inch team cooldown, being he's going to want to drop one of the inch teams for an RSP. Very true. Very true. I'm just going to apologize for my mic because it's a better sound level. I forgot my gain was turned up. It should be. Yeah, we're waiting for feedback from the audience. But thank you very much for noticing that. What else on the notes? Um, they've got two developmental lab scientists for the debuff to feedback pulse. I'm, I would replace one of those with another maintenance engineer. So you have that single engineering team on global. And then... Let's see. The, I would replace the other with the fabrication engineer uh, to extend the duration of reverse shield polarity. 100% agree, that's all I'd, the only changes I would make. Anybody have anything else to add for this build? Actually, there's one more thing with the DOFs. I would replace the Warp Core Engineer. They've got one for the chance to give extra power. If you want to run a Warp Core Engineer, I would personally use QLL because that will wipe every single debuff out. Um, but you're going to get a lot of debuff removal via the Iconian shield anyways, though. Alright, well thank you very much Larry Smith 13 for submitting that. We're going to move over to our other build here. 
This one brought to you by Torp Viper. Let me guess. It's a cannon build. I actually have a very good recommendation for this one. Um, the removal of all torpedoes and replacing with, I mean, if you want to stick with cannons, you know, just like three more dual heavy cannons, four, or even better, you know, beams right out in. Really? Really? I got a high yield torpedo for you. Where would you like it? I would like it targeted at the listings that are 1EC below mine. We can make that happen for a price. Give you our can. folks a moment here to go. Oh, go ahead, Valken. So I was just going to say you could aim that torpedo at the torpedo code. Nah, nah, nah. All right, so we're looking over this one here. Uh, looks like we have what appears to be the Terran Photon Torpedo, Neutronic Torpedo, Hence Biomolecular, and the Terran Withering Disruptor. And with that, we have the two-piece Mako, two-piece Iconian. That'll give you at least three hot restarts. Um, shield uh, defensive a bonus ability. And the two-piece Mako would give you the plus 25% cat one photon, uh, sorry, torpedo damage, not photon, all torpedo damage. Looks like he's got two Omnis and a turret. Is is that Tetrion turret part of a two-piece set? or? It is part of the, well, what I call the butterfly set or... Um, the you have the core, the either the Tetrion Omni or turret, and then what else? There was a console and something else, wasn't there? It's the, the temporal piece. temporal disentanglement suite. Oh, yes, okay. thank you. That's the property. Yeah, actually, yes. Here's a console. He does have the console on there, so he might be going for the two-piece bonus. Which wouldn't do much, honestly, unless you're running a bunch of Tetrion weapons on there. A while ago, and if you remember, we did uh, come up with a prospect. I don't know how much you tested it, but the double Tetrion Omni. So you have the dis uh, Entanglement Suite console, the Tetrion Omni, and then a crafted Tetrion Omni. And then a kinetic cutting beam. Uh, I don't know how that worked out. And then you just beam fire will one to the two omnis. It worked well for prox, but ultimately I ended up going away for it um, to do something similar like this. But I would actually went and used a omni with over and another omni just for the tetrion itself. Um, the Tetrion proc, when it happens, is nice, but eh, whatever. I had the Omni with a, a beam overload, so either one of those two Omnis on there would get the overload. You know, and hey, look, an extra, a little bit extra would help, but it's not necessary as far as energy weapon. Especially when you're going for a full-on torp boat, all your energy weapons are going to do is either add debuffs or be weapon procs or attempt to get exploit procs so that your torpedoes will hit harder. I'm surprised Spencer hasn't said much of anything else. I mean, SLB, what do you think? This attack pattern beta 3 right here. That's good. I've got a, quite a few builds that where all I do is just a single beta 3. <laughs> and it why doesn't... is beta 3 over beta 1? I don't remember the numbers specifically, but if I recall, uh, it was mapped out to be potentially better in some situations for attack. Now, would it be anything crazy here to say if we swap that beta 3 for an omega 3 and then put the beta in beta 1 position? Wouldn't that give this person here a little bit more flexibility as far as offensive capabilities. True. 
but now he has to only run one uh, energy amplifying ability, such as Scatter Volley or the Beamfire Will, and he would be stuck with the Beamfire Will. Well, mm -hmm. if he replaces the two Omnis with uh, two turrets instead, that would, number one, give a faster firing rate for proccing things like weapon system synergy and other effects, and then it would only, he'd only need one cannon skull. But then he couldn't run the beta one because he still needs his torpedo spread and high yield. They could move the torp spread down to torp spread one and ditch the chemo because chemo's absolutely right. worthless now. Yeah, it's worthless for both energy weapons and torpedoes. Torpedoes, we felt that change since they made the change to torp spread, but... Now energy weapons are feeling it too with this last patch. So, yeah. There is that option where we would get rid of this chemocyte lace weaponry and it's showing up there as a blank spot. Um, and we can. I, I would recommend throwing the high yield from a 3 to 1. Get rid of this chemocyte lace weaponry. And then weaponry going with attack pattern omega 3 here, beta 1 here, move torp spread to torp spread 3. Because with the Hestia here, you're you're able to slot a Gravwell. And that Gravwell is great for bunching up a whole bunch of weak little things together, nice one big clump. And that clump can all be shot down by, oh, look, your high yield or your torpedo spread. And when you're throwing down a lot of torpedoes and you have concentrate firepower here, is what we can see, you're going to have high yield spam like crazy on big targets. Now, if you're looking to say the opening of an ISA, for example, you're charging in, queue up a torp spread three, put concentrate firepower two on the cube that's there. It's a regular cube, it's not gonna take a lot of beatings, but you'll have at least a concentrate firepower on that target so when your torps land on that cube, you'll get at least a high yield one available to you. At least one. And then that way you could turn around and hit either any of the spheres that are still up and running or use that to knock out one of the first generators to the transformer. Now, the what I'm shocked that none of you caught here was this emergency power to weapons one. Remind me again, how much does weapon power benefit Torps? None. I imagine he's just it using it as half weapons. I, I, I imagine yeah, his... I would... Sorry, go on. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> well, I was no, going to no, say, no. I would imagine he's probably using it for the energy weapons and the innate damage bonus that it has. In my opinion... The emergency powered weapons one for three aft NG weapons, plus the cannon I guess he has in the front. It would provide it's a minor, minor damage boost. And the weapon power itself, he's probably running full orcs and has half weapon power. So I, I think in his mind that he thought boosting his weapon power by plus fifteen was gonna benefit his NG weapons and overall DPS the most, but all those aft all those aft weapons are gonna be used for is debuffing his own sets, so He's better off using some sort of defense emergency trait or even a heal. Most part of shields, an engineering team. Uh, that's pretty much all I would go for, <laughs> in my opinion. But Odin, you're the band, so. Well, if you're able to, um, if you want another offensive capability, you could also put structural integrity collapse on that engineering slot right there. So you will have that structural integrity collapse it's dot, it's debuff, and then you can lay down the law with all your torpedoes hitting that target. So as Valken has correctly pointed out, you have defensive options there for you, and every little bit helps, especially considering you're running one hull heal and one shield heal. You could have an engineering team or a emergency power to shields, or if you want an offensive kick, structural integrity collapse. If you're finding yourself in need of maneuverability and or some sort of defensive measure, you could always replace Concentrate Firepower 2 with Aux to Inertial Dampeners. I'm a fan of that. 
if you really are in a situation where you're not going to lay down more than one concentrate firepower per major target, do that. What do you guys think? Consoles? Plasmonic Leech isn't going to serve them too much. I can see it, and I see a lot of people when they're making an entry level into the Torp build, especially when coming from the land of beams, that Leech is your life. Leech is it. You must have all energy, wep all weapon power at max, and then all other supplemental powers will eventually be at max level with Leech. Ditch that line of thought. Get rid of it. You are going to drop your weapon power so low, people think you're crazy. It's okay. You're still going to hit hard. Jack your aux levels to maximum. Then you can play around with your energy levels for both, your subsystem energy levels, I should say, for both shields and engines. And you can do it in such a way that you will hit the minimum of 75 for amp. So you will have, at the very least, three stack of amp for your core. That should be more than enough. So as a replacement, would you run 0 0.0 energy conduit for the base power levels and crit charts? You could if you have that. Um, let me see. We got bineural infusion circuits, what about 62. tachyokinetic? Tachyokinetic was, for maneuverability. I thought that would be in the third slot, the one that has blank. I would hope so, because nothing is showing up there. Yeah. If you don't have tachyo there... Yeah. Um, oh, no, 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 the blank slot, I remember this now. The blank slot is there for the ferrofluid console from the Terran rep that gives you the ah, okay. half-second reduce the TORP uh, self-global CD. Instead of one full second before you can fire another torp, you know, ancient history mechanic, it reduces by half a second, which it, that's the only reason that console exists, yeah, aside from the set bonus, which is nice. But realistically, what Cryptic needs to do is get rid of that stupid one second um, global for firing a single torp and allow torps to be able to fire as you have them, just like beams do, just like cannons do. But, you know, that's just my opinion. But, Odin, that's defying the whole things. NG is life. <laughs> Torpedoes must have some downfall. What, you mean shield resistances isn't enough? They do. It's called travel <laughs> time. Oh, that travel time thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know. So, Odin, how do you like a uh, hive space normal with a DPS group? <sighs> I do very well. Thank you very much for asking. Is, is that your favorite map for, like, you know, getting AFK penalties? I don't get AFK penalties. And SOB, actually, whether he intended to do this or not, brought up a very good point. As any Torp boat captain, you're going to have to fly aggressively to make sure that your Torps land on their target, either at the same time or just before all of your energy compatriots are in position to fire. So if you're with a high DPS team, you're going to have to fly aggressively, which means you're going to get shot at a lot. So have high defenses to roll with you on that, or have a ways to be able to survive a lot of incoming damage and use that to your advantage. Something like Invincible, which I hate with a passion, but at the same time, I'll use it because in a high DPS team, if nobody's going to be the threat tank, by default, you are the threat tank. Throw in a grab well, and threat is going to you unless you have somebody who is dedicated to be a threat tank. Oh, you may be happy. I sparked a uh, an incentive for DPS healers. You might see some people healing you. <laughs> well. Captain MK does that already. In the hives, that man nannied the hell out of me. And I say nanny not as far as, oh, he's just there just to make sure that I get all the deeps and, you know, nobody else gets anything else. But as far as making, just, I should use this term, tending to my structural and medical needs. He made sure that if I took a scratch, that I was band-aided up and ready to go back out. 
I, I took a page out of Tankio and decided to promote a lot of DPS healers recently, so hopefully a lot of new builds will be coming out for those. I look forward to seeing them. It just sounds like nannies. <laughs> There's a difference between the philosophy of nannying versus making sure that your team is alive and well. Yes. And they're not necessarily sacrificing their DPS and boosting one person's DPS in order to do it either. All right. Here's a good question here. Starship targeting systems. What do you all think? Six points at most. With the, with the way skill... Uh, sorry, we're going over, are we going over the skills? Yes, we're going over the uh, skills right now. In terms of most things... I, even though you've only got three or four NG weapons, I still think you can put the nine points in because when you think about everything else there is, what points, if you took three points out of weapons training, the tier one, where are you going to put them? That you wouldn't already put them in anyway. So I'm thinking nine points in weapons, attack patterns, projectile weapons, energy weapons, the time that you cut down is a specialization to me personally because you're supposed to be hitting as hard as you possibly can and you're already going to have nullified weapon power anyway they might as well hit as hard as they can in terms of base damage because in terms of defensive points and power levels the only time I think that you're going to be struggling is because you're not running things like plasmatic leech and supremacy you're going to have to invest more into the subsystems so the shield performance, the engine performance. Which is one of the things that I wanted to do here with this build. I'm actually starting to fill it out right now live. Um, go over a couple points with you all on it. Subsystem repair. Back in the day, that thing used to actually be good. But could anybody explain to me why it's just kind of a... Mm? Well, everyone always runs emergency powers nowadays, and that gets rid of it. Engineering team gets rid of it. Iconian shield gets rid of subsystems. And the overall points itself, I think, if I remember rightly, it only lowers the downtime of you being disabled by two seconds at nine points. Six points for a second. <laughs> you barely notice it, but I could be wrong. Yeah, with all the hot restarts, um, for most builds, it's really not worth it to put anything into subsystem repair anymore because it's going to be up and running before it, before the effect of having points in there would even come into play anyway. So we have, at the very least, three hot restarts just from the engine, core, and shield. And I believe the, the other console from... Butterfly also has an auxiliary restart. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, engineering team also removes disabled subsystem conditions. So, you know, if if you don't have the Iconian set in that console, you can slap on a couple engineering teams and you know have an ability to restart your subsystems anyway. So, what do you guys think about warp core potential? I have an argument here. A lot of people, I, mean, I think even Spence here, uh, a lot of people put for Federation characters, they put more points into Warp Core uh, potential, and even Romulan characters put it in Warp Core potential and have efficiency at 6. I'm the only person that does it the other way around. I do 9 points in efficiency and 6 points in Warp Core potential for all, because of the amount of the efficiency is gone by your base power levels, how they're original, originally set. And I always put my auxiliary to full and my weapons to full, so my engines and shields are really low. So the efficiency spikes on my two lower systems, and it, I get so much more out of it than potential. Warp core potential only raises the maximum level, and the maximum level is being raised by things like supremacy, but on a torque boat, this is where things get a little bit weird for me, because I'm not entirely sure how you apart from maybe a Terran warp core, you get your power levels. So it's a little bit hazy. I would personally probably still do efficiency myself, but that's because I'm not going to change my skills just to run a top boat for one, three points. But You're 
your warp core potential and warp core efficiency really kind of plays out when you have low energy levels for a subsystem. And the biggest one you're going to have the low energy level for would be your weapon power. So in a sense, it's still, to me, to me in that aspect, still benefits over the potential. I mean, you can just put six and six, but I always do nine on efficiency. There's somebody in chat asking why nine points into uh, Starship batteries. Batteries are used since they released the latest update of all the extra battery uh, batteries, such as the energy amplifiers, the kinetic amplifiers. They all give you large damage buffs for a period of time. And the more points you have in batteries, the longer they last. And more points in batteries also helps, I think, with cooldown, unless that's just the duty officer, but the main thing is for the duration. Uh, no, that's the duty officer. Yeah, it's the duty yeah, officer. Yeah, uh, nine it's... points in batteries literally doubles the duration of most batteries in the game. Yeah, so I was going to say, with the latest batteries, is the duration. Most yeah. people only used it for the red mag capacitor before, but new stuff changed that. I was just about to ask, does that also affect the red matter capacitor? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. I'm a video guy. I'm not a build guy, so yeah. Right now, this to me, this kind of gives me the core of the generic torp boat. Now, if you're going to throw a little bit more onto energy weapons here, like say, for example, you swap ships, you have a couple ships that are going to throw down a lot of energy weapons fire, but you still want your torps to hit hard, yeah, you definitely can max this out. And heck, why not? Well, you can't do that here. Let me see how far can we take this up. Uh, yeah, that high. Eh, whatever. But at the very least, you could do energy weapons there if you wanted to have a little bit more kick out of your energy weapons. I did this once when I was running a lot of cannons, but, you know, just for fun, or my beam overload build. And it was, it was a bit hilarious, you know, just to see some of the numbers you can get there without maximizing everything in the energy weapons. So... If you're you kind of swap in for like a little holiday outside of Torps, yeah, you can do this here. But as far as a base build is concerned, more or less here. Um, you have guys and gal have any advice as far as what we can do specifically for this particular build? I added the six in grab gens because of the grab well. Uh, you're not getting a lot out of your part gens. So at this point, it really wouldn't matter. You're not going with an isokinetic cannon kick. Um, this one, you could do a feedback pulse build on it to replace the grab well, but I think you're you're more of a, a hold them and nuke them type. So grab gens will get you more bang for your buck. I will say three points in threat control. As you said yourself, you're going to be taking aggro anyway unless there's a threat tank in there, and your three points won't affect their six and all their consoles. And the three points will give you more resistances overall in your ship when getting hit. That's something I've actually been toying around in my head, and I was going to ask you and the Agronauts as well, especially considering that you know when running with the Agronauts, if adding three points into threat control is going to throw them off. Because as a torp boat, you, 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 if you're going to go in a pug run, you're doing the, and if you are doing the majority of the damage, you're going to get shot at, period, end of discussion. So, with that said, when you start going into the higher-end runs where you have other people who are designed to grab threat, you adding points into threat control, would that be more of a boon for you or a bust for them and, by proxy, you anyway? These three points in the threat control, it, it really only goes in there for resistance. It doesn't actually add that much threat control. It's only when you start going to the six points it really starts adding up. But as you do grab a lot of uh, threat anyway with torpedoes, um, it's going to be something you're going to have to play with, I think, because I don't know if that would just push it slightly over the edge. But in my terms, if you take aggro anyway, which I've run with you, and you do, on very hard, like especially the opening, 
after we've grabbed aggro and then you do your big opening, you take aggro anyway over people running the whole consoles. And if you're doing that already, the three points in the threat control on your opening is not going to hurt you in terms of it. And then it should subside back to the Agronaut. So we're going to load up three points here to threat control. And you know what? I might actually do this. I'm going to respec and do this exact same build loadout here. Now, if I'm going to throw on with a grab well, let me see here. A little bit more defensive. Da, da, da. Shield performance is there. Grab gens. Power insulators, is that really going to play into it? Because if, I, I've tried this beforehand. The Borg still drain the heck out of my shields, no matter yeah, what. I would recommend the hull repair. It's oh, just for the sake of it, because you're going to need all the healing you get. And if you're, if you're running a limited amount, you might as well get every bang as you, you can out of the, the healing. It's it's like those spare points, where do you put them? To me, just put them in the defense. Apart from uh, maybe armor reinforcements, but they don't really give much nowadays. I don't know if you have enough points for that. Uh, we got, we still have enough points here. Um, put three in weapon performance again, just to add a little bit more kick to the energy weapons. Even though it's only going to contribute at most with this type of build, at most maybe fifteen percent. Wouldn't the impulse thrusters be better? <sighs> Oof. Depends on that because if you have the tachyokinetic replacing the leech you technically would have enough maneuverability. You never have enough. <laughs> All right, Hit for flavor on this build, for flavor on this build, we will throw points in there. So we have nine in impulse thrusters. We'll put three in armor reinforcements. I got to head out to you guys. All right, have fun. Thanks for joining us. So we have this much right here. So we're good here with that. And thank you very much, Agent Existence, for the tips on that, saying that armor reinforcements and hull plating have a horrible drop-off mm -hmm. as you add points. So three on them should be more than enough. Even three nowadays, it's minimal. It's uh, the amount of scalings, yeah. But it's every little helps. But I wouldn't go for any more than three. Agreed. Because here you can start playing around with points. If you're finding that your your power levels may be a little bit on the hit in trying to get amp, you could probably add a little bit more into engine and shield performance. 299. Let me see. Where can I suck out something here that wouldn't be too bad? Duh. One point out of armor enforcement since put it in the structural integrity. Or the engine performance. And then I have a half a point that's going to sit around and do nothing. I was actually going to pull out from hull repair. Drop that down to six. Pull that up there and see where that goes. Sounds good. And then we have one and a half points in there. Structural integrity could work. Warp core efficiency. Yeah, I have one and a half points to play around with here. This point. Whatever. Find something, throw it in there. Normally I wouldn't dump I my other build, but I didn't dump anything in the threat control, so. There. Up on structural integrity just to put it somewhere. But that's that as far as the skills are concerned. Specializations, if the runs are going to be short, go with Intel primary, command secondary. I have been kind of looking at command primary for Achilles heel. Now, granted, it's not much of a, a quote-unquote team-oriented um, 
team oriented as far as using uh, Intel fleet for the entire team. But on that primary target, especially if you're dealing with big targets and everybody's hitting that big target, Achilles heel, uh, a nice debuff to that target for 10 seconds. Is it 10 or 20? I'm trying to remember. I think it's 10 seconds with a 30 second lockout. So if that's the case, then then you're looking at everybody being able to hit that target hard for 10 seconds. If you can coordinate well, that's a that's a decent debuff. So on long runs or on a major target, that's going to be nice. Or conversely, if you're going in there to nuke one specific target, like say Corfez uh, at the end boss there, you, you can only have one intel fleet up at a time. You running Achilles heel would then add another debuff to that target. So that can also work for you as well. Play around with it. I'm still trying to learn a little bit more with it. I'm working with some of the math gurus out there to try and get more hard numbers and seeing in which situations running command primary would be better for the Achilles heel debuff versus running Intel fleet. If you can flank your targets a lot, Intel primary is the way to go, hands down. Intel fleet also, hands down. That armor pen for torp boats, mwah. some of my max ones came off of that. Hit the gateway, hit the tack cube, drain its freaking shields. You're done. Target's dead. Now that I'm done drooling all over myself, anybody want to say something while I clean myself off? Anybody alive? Yes, we're alive. Okay. I was just checking. Um, uh. So uh, I noticed I don't see anything in this build on skills. Or not on uh, traits, sorry. So are we going to move on to traits and recommend yeah. good ones? L or? Let's go with okay. this. If you're going to be sitting still and not moving around a lot, um, anchored, that that buff stack right there is just mm, phenomenal if you're going to be maneuvering mm -hmm. around a lot forget it that's not worth it for you but say for example you can get ahead of everybody else sit on the target and build up at least two stacks of anchored you're good you can move slightly like just inch up a little bit to reposition briefly and then cut all power to movement and you will not drop your anchored stacks. Right. And anchored works exactly the opposite of pedal to the metal, where pedal to the metal, as soon as you stop your full momentum, it drops all of your stacks. But anchored, those stacks are removed slowly. So if you can move just a short distance, then you keep some of your stacks, some or all of your stacks. By the way, for those who don't have a blade of shell, get it. It's a beautiful thing. It saved my butt more times than I can count. Accurate. Use that for PvP. For PvE, not so much here. Your science powers are just supplementing you here at this point, so you really wouldn't need to do anything here with it. Um, if you needed... A little bit more hit points. Yeah, you can get bulkhead technician, but if we're going straight offensive, let's pass that. We can go definitely with elusive for some defensive traits here. If you feel like you don't need what about, defense, go on. I was going to say, what about psychological warfare? It'll uh, give a pretty good boost to the control effects for the grab wall. This is true. But if you're going to be throwing down a lot of firepower here and your gravel is not going to be up consistently versus how many torps you're flinging elusive will help you out especially when you're on the move mm. fail safe will help Eh, i find in pve it doesn't work nearly as well as it does in pvp that's just my own personal opinion though 
but that is an option if you feel like you need a bit more defensive capabilities. Feel safe scramblers there. Fleet coordinator. That's definitely a thing. Hold on, let me put elusive back there. Fleet coordinator here. Fluidic cocoon for hive probably be nice, but again, not necessary. Helmsman, if you like to maneuver a lot or use evasive maneuvers to put yourself in a better position, that works nicely. Um, you know, let me just put it here. I kind of flip flop between this depending on the map and pick, pick up something else. Innocuous reduction in threat and a little bit more uh, critical severity. Intense focus is kind of a eh. inspirational leader. Also, eh, when it when it triggers, it's great. But when I look at, at my overall combat uh, on matches, I don't see a lot of times that inspirational inspirational leaders up, let alone stacking. And I'm spamming abilities left and right, so it's not there for me. Uh, I I have it. I've just dropped it. Most times I just dropped it. Every once in a while, I'll pick it up just to see if it does anything, and then I remember why I dropped it. Intimidating strikes is nice in in its concept. In practice, in PVE, it's yeah. In PvP though, it's uh, it's very nice. It's very very nice. Invasive control programming. I'm just going to leave that one alone for a minute because there are some builds where you can use that and it would be very glorious for you. But for this, straight up as is, we'll leave it alone for right now. Kinetic precision, bonus shield penetration for projectiles. That's there. It's uh, 10%. Doesn't feel like much, but it helps a little bit especially when you have things like self-modulating fire not available to you at that point. Kinetic precision helps a little bit. Uh, pattern recognition, if you needed more defense and you're constantly in, in combat, then yeah, that'll help. But otherwise, I pass on it. Projectile training, that is very, very, very good. Very good. Must take. Must, must take. And self-modulating fire. There's the bad boy right there that gives you big punches for 10 seconds. And then a 45-second lockout, you get nothing. But for that 10-second window, all torps that you fire will have 50% shield penetration. Done. Everything else at this point in time is just kind of uh, tailed to your own specifics, uh, your own likes. Now, Starship Trade, since you have the Hestia, we definitely know which one you do have. Where did that sucker go? Numerical superiority. More of your buddies are focusing on that one target, the more damage you do to it. From here, it kind of depends on what you have as far as ships available to you. But say you had no other ships whatsoever. I mean, what else is there that's free that we can get? Kind of makes things a little bit harder to decide on. But... Yeah, Torpedo Barrage, if you can get your hands on that, anytime you fire a high yield, once every 30 seconds you fire another high yield, yeah, it's brilliant, especially when you have concentrate firepower up. Uh, weapon System Synergy, this one comes off of the Manticore or the Federation uh, ship or the KDF and ROM versions. I forget what the names are. And I know you're listening. Um, whenever you get the Romulan version of that ship, just type it out for us, please. Other than that, uh, let me see. What else is here? Yeah. 
Falcon, help me out on here. This one here, real quick. Which of the other ones do you get just from your specializations? I mean, what's free to you once you fill out your uh, your spec tree? Sorry if you're trying. Improved predictive algorithms is one of them, isn't it? Yep, we got that one on there. Um, improved pedal to the metal. Yes. Uh, improved command frequency. We know he has numerical superiority. Wherever it went. And then if you have the fifth one, whatever you can get your hands on will be good. Um, overwhelming force on the Fed side is pretty cheap, so you can get your hands on that. The Kobali one, if you did do that one, yes, that is an option there as well. Um, pretty much at that point, that's pretty good there as far as that's concerned for what's freely available to you um otherwise if you can get all hands on deck if you're attack captain um that's beautiful the torpedo barrage it would be numero uno on anybody's list there if you can get your hands on the zal invincibility works as well There are a couple of options. If you get your head, uh, get your hands on a Bantham, a Benthon, um, sorry, load viral warhead will work for you as well. And then the space reputations, real quick, before we close this thing out, a mega kinetic sharing that is your bread and butter as a torp boat. Forty percent of whatever torpedo damage that hits hull will be a dot for six seconds on that target 40 percent of that damage is converted into is added on as a dot for six seconds so if you hit that target for 300k from one of your torpedoes 40 percent of that 300k is now added as a dot for six seconds i cannot stress this enough some people say drop this for a torp boat for something else don't do it do not no, do it. Uh, omega kinetic yeah, Omega Kinetic Sharing is routinely one of the top three uh, DPSing traits and or parsing traits in in my torque boat parses routinely. I mean, it's it's crazy. Nukara Offensive, for obvious reasons, uh, that's a cat two damage boost for you. And the higher your ox levels are, the more of a damage boost you get. Run it. If we're going full out, um, precision will work. Where is the Terran 2? We have Dyson, Iconian, New Romulus, Nukara, Task Force Omega. They don't have the Terran 1 there. But Terran Tier 2 would fill in this slot here. Uh, as far as the 13.3% damage boost for your torpedoes and any slow rollers that you may have even though you don't have any on the ship but if you did they would move 33 percent faster in practice it's meh it really needs to be at the very least 50 percent faster in order for it to be good but yeah you know can't be you know can't actually have everything you want um if we wanted something else here for the fifth slot, I would go with advanced targeting systems. As soon as I remember where I have that. Right there, Dyson Joint Command. That would give you that. Then you would have precision here for the crit hit. And then you can get your crit D from advanced targeting systems there. And then you can run this. Now, my personal opinion would be is that if you're going up against something like uh, Kittimer Space, I personally would drop precision for enhanced armor penetration. 
because most of your targets are going to be bare hull. And you're just going to throw down as much damage as you can, as quickly as you can on it. So this that's just it. Otherwise, I'm pretty much done with this build here. Does anybody have anything else they want to add to it? I have nothing to add. I'm here for the learning. Nope. Real quick, though, Zeph, hmm. the Hestia, what's your opinion on this ship as far as how it performs? It performs pretty good, to be honest. Um, now, I'm not hardcore PvP or PvE, -er, but it's got a really nice turn radius or turn rate, and um, a quick little ship. It's I've been quite um, impressed with it so far. It's sturdy too, which I like. It is a tough little ship. Little. Yeah, I see what you did there. Well, that's wrapping up our builds portion there. Um, we had, did have a question as far as why the Hestia. Well, the Hestia here has something that the Manicor doesn't. That Lieutenant Commander Science slot. That gives you the ability to take a whole bunch of loosely packed little gnats, put them into nice one package there, and you could throw down a high yield enhanced biomolecular at it and watch them all go boom if their shields are weak. Or if they're a bunch of tough targets like a bunch of spheres, you can grab all them in together throw down a Torpedo Spread 3 Neutronic at it, hope that the first one or two Torps out of that Torp Spread will drop enough of the power to power levels on those spheres to be able to actually have very weak shields for them, so that way the third Torpedo in that cluster will hit each one of those targets. And you would definitely see a lot of heavy kinetic damage to all of those targets there. The other thing to take in mind is the Hestia. If you don't have the Manticore, the Hestia is actually one of the next best ships to go for for a torpedo boat on the Fed side. It's actually in my top five. Agreed. Uh, pretty much, again, was saying if you don't have the Manticore, the Hestia is is just that. They did do some seat rearrangement there, and moving the Ensign going from straight tactical to a universal was actually a wise move by Cryptic. They listened to us. They finally made the change on there. And people were saying, yeah, this is a much better improved ship. Oh, the reason I wasn't saying anything, apparently my mic disconnected. <laughs> well, welcome back. Thank you. Oh, yay. <laughs> Yeah, the blank spot there is chemocyte. Um, right now, chemocyte is, for all intents and purposes, bugged because it is not performing as to where it was last reported and how it should be performing. And we saw this with torpedoes during the torpedo spread and a neutronic and quantum phase change. But now, as of the last patch, it also affected energy weapons in the same way where it's the proc rate is abysmally low and the proc chance as worked out by Zerg uh, seems to be that it rolls for crit on activation, not on actual uh, individual shots being applied to the target. So with that, we'll just wrap up the build show here. Um, Valken, was there anything that you wanted to say or state? Uh, wasn't there a next topic you were going to go right after the builds? Well, the, it's kind of like a bonus as far mm -hmm. as the state of the game itself and the current performance of the client, the server, and interaction with abilities in this game. I'll try and keep that short. In the long term, in terms of builds, uh, a lot of us can help you out. And the most important thing when it comes to ship builds, the builds help a lot. But you can run pretty much everything you could possibly imagine and still perform well as long as you've got the mechanical basics down. We can help you out with builds all the time. 
But the one thing you have to improve on and the main questions you should be asking instead of builds is how do I use my abilities and how do I term use my ship? Because this torpedo boat will not function at all unless he uses his torpedoes right, hits the right spread on the right torpedoes, the right high yields, uses the concentrated fire pass between the torpedo spreads and the high yields. It all comes down to how activating that stuff, and that's down to hot keys. So maybe there's more something you can go into, Odin, but builds always help. They're the core basics of your build. But when it comes to it, if you don't know how to use the build, you could we could give you the best build ever. You can fully spec it out, but until you learn how to use it, you will not perform to the potential of what you could do. That's pretty much it. <laughs> well said on the end of the builds. And Val, you're doing uh, your Twitch stream for STO tomorrow. Is that correct? Yeah, my main... My, for some reason, my hottest day of the week is Monday tomorrow at twitch.tv slash Mr. Valak. No, it's, no, it's not. It's Valakin FX on Twitch. My YouTube is Mr. Valakin. <laughs> it always confuses me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll put the links in the, the show results here. So. <laughs> I need to change that one day. Um, but yes, I'll be uh, doing the, sh the stream tomorrow. So if you need help with builds uh, between now and then, I'll be available tomorrow. It's 5.30 GMT time. So get on Google and translate that to your time. But uh, that goes on till 10.30 GMT. So I think that's roughly in the late dish afternoon. Yeah, uh, it goes from first. about uh, 12. 30 p.m. Eastern time to 5.30 p.m. Eastern time, if I got my math right. That's right. So I'll always be able to help you out on the, the builds on there. You also have a lot of fun on the stream, and not just builds, but we also go over piloting, and any questions you could possibly come up with, we'll try and answer for you. And sometimes you even see Odin on the stream, if he makes out of work. Yeah, if I make it out of work alive on one of those days, so <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, we had a one quick question before we depart here. Um, there was a question about the, well, I don't know how you pronounce it, Nikor, Nikor, the Undyne ship. Good as far as a science tactical, or sorry, tactical focus science boat. It used to be one of my favorite ships. It was the main ship I ran. I had I got into the DPS channels on that ship. As a PvP build, it was running six beams and two torpedoes, if I remember rightly. And uh, that ship is been... torpedoes crap. <laughs> this has been, it was one of my favorite ships. Uh, I think it's an amazing ship. As a tier five view, especially in PvP, it had everything. It had, as a control ship, it was brilliant. It was able to run whatever you want. I ran it as an orcs to pat, I think. And I could run gravity wells, everything I needed. Range Power Weapons 3, I could switch around, put reverse shield polarities in, whatever I wanted. It You can get really good numbers out of that ship. You can easily do, in a well-done build, flown properly, you can easily do 100k in that ship. The only problem I have with it, it's a bit outdated compared to most ships you can fly nowadays. Um, what would be the best uh, latest tier 6 ship that's like the Undyne? I'm looking at the Hestia because I flew that thing as a tour boat as well with a grab well. And I'm looking right at the Hestia and I'm thinking, yeah, had that, yeah, had that, yeah, had that, yeah, had that, yeah, had that. Mm, yeah, it's Hestia. Uh, but for me, it doesn't have Intel. <laughs> <laughs> Intel Schmintel. Command is where it's at. <sighs> yeah. All right, well. We're going to wrap this thing up right now because I know some people are tired. It's been a long week for everybody. Thank you very much, Valken FX, for staying up so late and joining us here on this one. And we'll be definitely checking out your stream on Monday, uh, this week and next week. And for those who will be tuning in on to the show, Trek Wednesday, we will have one of the Agronauts on the stream live. Check it out, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. From Zeph Films, a chief logistics officer who had to go and give himself a bubble bath to get rid of all the fleas behind his ears. A Timber Wolf, Teacher Kirby, thank you very much for joining us tonight. And for all of you out there, 
thank you very much for checking us out on Destruction Sunday. We're doing a whole synopsis, build advice and whatnot. You know what? Let's go out and play. Have fun, everybody. Have a good night. Good night, buddy. Good night, everybody.